There's so many things. They, they always need their relatives around them. They don't survive well if you just try pick them. It doesn't work. This is what yarrow looks like before it, it blooms, before it comes up. It's like this little feathery, this is all yarrow. And this is it, and it's, once it's come up, this is just very, very young. You know, you can have yarrow that's pink and purple and red. And that, that all comes, that's a domesticated yarrow. Ours is white. This is a form of bed straw blowing in the wind. Bed straw repels mice. In the teepee, we always had a liner in there. There's another, like another little, a thinner teepee, like a thinner, I want to say cloth. When you, in the teepee and you'd stick that bed straw in there and it's like a, it's like insulation is what it, it's used for. This is a vetch. So. This bean is when it, it's matured now. Where the seeds are is in the bean. Okay. Yeah, it does look like a pea. I was hoping we'd be able to get the ground plums to, because they look like a, they, they have the same thing, or the other thing is that the licorice that's out here. His goat's beard, it'll go really, this is young, really young. As it gets older, it goes really, really twisted. It's not native to here came from another country. Okay. Let's see if we go down the dip, whether there's anything more down here. But like I said, there every every week there's something new comes out. Oh, is this our ground plum? It is. Is that it? That is. That's what they look like when they start. This is reported to be used for uh, bronchial uh, problems, eh? It's the, it's the seaweed that you put water on it. It was one of the most important things that we had for medicine on, on the prairie. This, yeah, and it's really, really hard to find because it kind of hides on you. Do they? Yeah. It's, it's uh, black, it looks like, yeah, it looks like really black dirt on the ground and what it is is it's, uh, it's that seaweed that contains a lot of uh, iron. And we just pick it and pour boiling water on it and eat it, yep. Oh, we, here's a rose in bloom, full bloom. So well, the rose was used as a, an antibacterial. The whole plant is used. You dig it up and you boil it and you wash everything down. In fact, uh, spiritually too, it's a good cleanser that you cleanse something if something bad happened someplace. You would clean that room out with uh, that space out with rose water. There, there isn't a lot, a whole lot of our own natural prairie grasses. We've lost a lot. There used to be stuff that was so high that used to weigh, they wove their summer clothes out of it, and they wore grasses. You know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, hides and not in the summertime. You know, especially prairie people. But this is. Bergamot, or what do they call it? Uh, 
This is it as it's starting to grow. This is just in, in it's a furry, feels very really furry. Bergamot we used as a tea, a tea to, to help if you have like, um, if you start to have flu-like symptoms or things are coming back up, acid comes back up into your stomach. So you'd give them bergamot tea to settle their stomach and it also eases the spasms they'd have and they then would be able to eat and the blockage would would be would work its way out. But I have a big purple flower when it's fully bloomed. Well there's a big goat's goat's uh, beard way over here. See how it twists? It has that unique way of twisting. And of course the flower is yellow when it comes out. They found with goat's beard that if you if you pick goat's beard just as as it when it comes into bloom, that they would mix it in with whatever they were putting in the teepee liners and it prevents the mice from getting in there. Mice don't like goat's beard. It doesn't look like there'll be anything else come out yet. say give it a couple of weeks you'll see something new out it takes quite a while before you know these weren't out last time we were here and they're just coming now so especially if we get rain then we'll have a good it'll be good to come out and 